Hello and welcome everybody on a new exciting edition of Mantis Development Update for the community of ETC. In this edition, we'd like to present to the community the following topics. Myself, David, I will give a couple of highlights outside of the development work. Dominic will give us more detailed insight on the development side of the project on what we have been completed over the last few weeks. And then Yap will present a demo of functionality he has implemented in our Mantis client. And Alex will make a demo of our automated testing framework for the wallet. On the non-technical side, I would like to highlight that we really appreciate our user feedback. Over the last few months, people have commented their user experience with Boom Mantis client and Mantis wallet via our uh, Mantis Discord. We discussed from those remarks with the users, captured them and transformed them into new functionalities. So please do not hesitate to give your feedback via Discord or GitHub issues. Second highlight is regarding our Mantis doc section. Our technical writer, Neil, has been creating a series of new articles on how to install Mantis client and wallet in our different platforms, and also how to connect to our Sagano testnet. Handing over to you, Dom, that will give us more detailed insight on the project work. Thanks, David. OK, let's start with what's available on develop right now. The latest fasting additions are handling block headers via header skeleton and implementation of branch resolving and switching during state synchronization. It looks like the effort has brought a net improvement, but we already know that there's more work to be done in this area. During work on checkpointing, we found problems with how che chain reorganization is performed. Some fixes have been already published and we continue the effort. We also improved how peer listing is shared between different parts of the client. Not the last round of, of improvements, but it should be harder to get stuck with a list of bad peers that prohibit successful state synchronization. And now for the work that is in progress. A core mechanic of the client is block fetching. During work on checkpointing, we have identified that the current implementation should be improved, and this is an area of our focus. We are continuing to work on stabilization of checkpoints. A lot of work and effort has been put into bringing fixes from different investigations into the development branch. Our current focus is investigation of the organization mechanism. As mentioned during the previous update, we continue to work on a suite of automatic tests that will allow us to show that checkpointing and the client in general is behaving as expected. We also are still at it with ETS coverage. At the moment, we are focusing on adding missing endpoints to Mantis and setting up a CI job. Improvements in fasting led to the discovery of unexpected behavior in peer management. We are looking into that. Last but not least, we are bringing the compatibility with Kachak to Mantis. The goal we are aiming at is to join Besu on the Aster testnet and mine some blocks. Now for the demos. First, Yap will give us a short presentation about UPnP and Mantis. Hi, I'm Yap, and I'm a software developer on the Mantis team. Today I'd like to demonstrate a new feature we've implemented recently, which is automatic port forwarding via UPnP. Ethereum Classic relies on a peer-to-peer -peer network for discovering peers and exchanging blockchain data. Some peers will be reached via outgoing connections, but for optimal performance, your client should be available for incoming connections as well. These connections rely on a UDP port for peer discovery and a TCP port for data transfer. During startup, Mentis will now attempt to open these ports on your router and forward them using the universal plug and play protocol. I will demonstrate how this works. On the right, you can see I'm logged into the admin interface of my router. No port forwarding is currently active. I'll start the Mentis client via the command line. Note that the Mentis wallet uses the same client behind the scenes, so this feature will also be available for users of the Mentis wallet. As you can see, the UPnP service is started and both the UDP and TCP ports are now opened and available for Mantis. After shutting down the client, these ports will be automatically closed again. To disable this functionality, you can pass a configuration option. This option is mantis.network.automatic port forwarding and you can set it to false. 
This will be useful in situations where port forwarding is configured manually. Small yet useful, thanks. Next is a demo by Alex. He's showcasing the automated tests of the Mantis wallet. Hello guys, my name is Aleksandar Spjanovic, I'm from Belgrade, Serbia, and I'm a software test engineer at IOHK working on Mantis project. In previous weeks, we have developed a test automation framework built with Node.js, which utilizes Spectrum, a library designed for testing Electron application, such as Mantis Wallet, Chai, an assertion library, and Cucumber, a tool for running automated tests written in plain language. I will show you now an example of such Cucumber automation test and its execution. Here you can see a feature file, which contains all the necessary steps that are required to run an automation, which in this case tests restoring a wallet on Sagano testnet. If we run the following command, it will launch the Mantis application and it will restore a wallet using private key. Okay, the application has started. It's connecting to Sagano testnet. This may take a couple of seconds. Once it connects, it will choose the restore wallet option. It will enter the wallet name and the private key and it will restore a wallet. Once it's done, it will log out and close the Mantis application. Okay, here we can see another example where we want to create the wallet. Now, similarly to the previous example, we will start the Mantis wallet application. We will connect to Sagano testnet. We will enter the wallet name and password, confirm the private key, remember the recovery phrase, re-input the recovery phrase, and then we'll log out and close the Mantis application. Okay, the application has started. It's connecting to Sagano testnet. Again, this will take a couple of seconds. Okay, it's connected. It will create the wallet. Remember the phrases, re-input them. and it will create a wallet. Similarly to the previous example, it will log out and close the Mantis application. These were just a couple of examples. Uh, we have around 200 of scenarios, and we can see that uh, once we execute a test case, we get a HTML Cucumber report. We can see on which uh, scenarios were executed. Now this last one would be create Mantis wallet, and we can see that uh, there are still 201 scenarios to be executed. Okay, that would be all for this update from my end. Thanks for watching and handing over back to you, Dom. Here's to stable releases. Thanks, Alex. That's it from me, David. Back to you. Thank you guys for the update and the demo. Remember to join our social media channels for our latest news and updates. Until our next development call, bye.